Oolong is a wild tea category, and Oolong teas are arguably among the most difficult to brew. Let's find together how to steep them to perfection. Hi guys, this is Gabriele from Nano Shan, where we share the pleasure of drinking and discovering genuine farm tea. I am into Oolong today, and so I for sharing with you a few insights about how to brew Oolong tea, because it's quite tricky. And uh, before we start with that, we should actually define, let's say, the frame of work, what are we talking about? And Oolong, since it is such a wide tea category, can even be classified in many different ways. Let's look at that. First of all, you can classify Oolong teas by geography, depending on the location, on the place where the leaves are cultivated and processed. There are actually four main uh, regions. The first one is Min Bay, Min Bay Oolong, which is uh, Fujian North, Min Bay, so it's the northern of Fujian, most notoriously Ui Yan Cha, Ui, rock tea, come from there. Then you have the Minnan Oolong, the South Fujian Oolong, like for example Tieguanyin. Then you have farther south the Oolong that come from Guangdong province, like for example the uh, Feng Guangdanzong, the Phoenix single bush. And if you go on the other side of the strait, you land in Taiwan and there are the Taiwan Oolongs. Now, there are other places in mainland China where Oolong tea is produced, but actually out of these uh, four regions, really nearly all of the Oolong come from. Of course, there are also regions in other places around the world where Oolong is produced, but usually you can trace back those Oolong to one of the four categories of the four places that I just mentioned, so I would say for the sake of this video, we will only focus on these four. Moreover, you can actually classify Oolong by what? By processing and time. What do I mean with that? Processing, well, you have two main categories. You have low oxidation Oolong, so fairly green Oolong, like for example, a high mountain Taiwan Oolong. And then you have medium slash high oxidation oolong, um, if you want to stay in Taiwan, for example, Dondi. Moreover, some oolong are roasted, so the roasting is also belonging, let's say, to one of these classification about the processing. And when I speak about time, I mean aging. Any oolong can also be aged, and if it is aged, it influences the taste and the way you are going to brew it. There is a third way of classifying Oolong tea, the simplest one maybe, and it is by the shape of the leaves. There are some rolled Oolong, ball rolled, they are really rolled in tiny, tiny little balls. And then there is another type that is actually twisted. So the leaves are twisted along their length. For example, um, the Danzong I was uh, um, mentioning before. Well, now that we have these three categories, and I hope it's not too confusing, but uh, it's Oolong, it's like that, is uh, complex, you cannot get, go out about that, let's look at how to brew them. In this video, I will not only bring you my personal experience and point of view, I actually interviewed several tea friends, several customers, sometimes it's actually even the same person, because tea friends are also customers, customers are also tea friends, and maybe some of those are actually watching right now. I interviewed them and asked them, how do you brew Oolong? I got a lot of information, I processed that. So what we will do today, first of all, I will give you, let's say, the basics. Simplified way of brewing Oolong, so that if you want to start with something easy, if you are maybe a little bit of a newbie, you don't want things too complicated, you can start with that. Then we will make things very complex, looking at uh, a few different tea lovers that really like particularly Oolong and about how they brew those Oolongs. 
And once we made and we brought about all this perspective, and maybe you will realize very soon if some of those will suit to you, at the very end, we make um, a summary where we try to find the sweet spot. Okay? So let's get started. First of all, I have to take my laptop because I have quite a lot of uh, uh, information of different uh, brewing parameters that I want to go through with you. Of course, I cannot remember every, everyone else's uh, way of brewing tea. I will also brew a, a tea myself, uh, the roasted one. I will give it a, a rinse. I will rinse the leaves. More about that in a moment. And uh, well, we said let's start keeping it simple and let's look uh, first of all at short sessions, short tea sessions. When you don't have uh, a lot of time for your session, you usually go for less leaves that uh, you will brew faster. They don't need a lot of brewings to be drunk to the end. And in that case, generally speaking, this is valid for all oolongs. I say we want to keep it simple at the very beginning. So we go for 95 degrees water. We use three grams of leaves for 100 milliliter. And the steeping time is 45 seconds for the first steep, followed by 60 seconds 90 and 120. If the tea is a bowl roll tea, you add actually one steep more at the very beginning, a little bit longer, 60 seconds. So you would have 60, 45, 60, 90, 120. You need a longer steep, the very first one, after the rinse, if you rinse it, because you want the leaves to open up. And uh, that's, let's say, the simplified version for a short session. Let's look now at the long session. So you would use more leaves. In this case, we will go always for 95 degrees centigrade, but we use double the leaves, six grams for 100 milliliters, and we shorten the time. So we'll do, we'll start with 15 seconds, then 20, then 25, and you keep on adding five seconds in the following steep. Whenever you have the feeling you need a little bit more, the next one, instead of five, you can add more. But keep in mind just going five by five. If it is a ball roll tea, at the very beginning, you do a longer one, 25. You substitute basically the first steep with one that is long like the third. So you go 25, then 20, then 25, 30, 35, and so on. That's the basics. If you're new to Oolong and you want something simple, by any means, stop this video and go out and try this one. But for those that are a little bit more, let's say, they want a little bit more details, in that case, now we start with the deep dive. And actually, maybe um, we should speak about these rates briefly, right? So you've seen that I rinse this tea, other people do not. There are many reasons why one should rinse or rinse not the tea. In this case, for example, just to bring you one, it is a roasted tea, so it's very, very dry, and I want a little bit to wake it up. Moreover, this is a massive Asian teapot. It retains a lot of it. So I want to warm up all my teaware before I do my first brew. Otherwise, you pour in hot water, and just by the time the hot water hits the vessel, in this case, the teapot, cools down and is no more that hot. All right, now let's start with uh, the tea lover or oolong lover, number one. And I say the infos are random. That's what they've provided to me. So this person uses actually for pretty much all their tea, five grams for 100 milliliters. They brew generally the tea at 100 degrees, with 100 degrees water temperature, and uh, their steeping time are actually pretty much the one I told you before for the long one. So we would do 15, 20, 25, 30, and keep on ending five, and they would do instead of the first 15 seconds, 25, if uh, it is a ball rolled wool. Now, 
they added some comments to that. They told me if uh, it is uh, a danzon or a yencha, like this one here, sometimes they feel like going higher with the leaks quantity and they may even go up to 8 grams, 400 milliliters. And recently they are also trying different temperatures. They have been brewing at 100 degrees for very long, very long, all the oolongs, but now sometimes they are trying um, 93 degrees with some greener oolong, low oxidation one, and uh, a little bit less than 100 with some darker oolong, just to, you know, experiment a little bit. And this is crucial. This person is very experienced with oolong and nonetheless he's still experimenting. And I suggest you, you do the same. You take a basics, you understand how a tea tastes well with which parameters and then you experiment thereabout a little bit. Another person here is actually referring more to green oolong that are rolled, like a green tea guanyin, for example, and says he goes rated for 3 grams per 100 milliliter, so closer to my first method that I mentioned before for shorter uh, sessions. Temperature 90-95, and then he does quite long steeping. He starts with the 75 long because it's rolled, the leaves have to open up, then 30, 45, 60, 120. And no rinse, no rinse at all, like the guy I was meaning, uh, mentioning before, also no rinse for all the oolongs. In the case of Danzong, though, the second person preferred to go a little bit lower with the temperature, 85 degrees, and this is because uh, otherwise he gets too much bitterness in the leaves. But he does only the first steeping with 85 degrees centigrade and then increases more and more and more as he goes through. Oh, I have it here, I have to drink it. And uh, that's all the information I have from this tea lover, probably because it tends to like more green rolled oolong and danzon. There is another person that gives way, way many details actually for different types. I'll give them through to you. It's clear that this person has been experimenting a lot, so mm, maybe some of you will like that. So, it starts with Taiwan Oolong, the rolled one, which are the largest portion of them. 7 gram, 400 milliliters. It starts with 90 degrees. It keeps the 90 degrees for quite a few steep, and then towards the end, it increases to 98 and then 100. Then, for aged tea, it doesn't start with 90 degrees. Taiwan aged tea, it goes straight actually to very high temperature, like 98 and 100 degrees. For Oriental Beauty, Don Fan Mei Ren, which is also a Taiwan Oolong, but is not rolled, it goes for 5 grams per 100 milliliters and then increases the temperature with the steepings from 70 to 95. Concerning Yen Cha, like the one I'm having here, is using 6 grams per 100 milliliters. It's exactly the amount of leaves I have here, but I'm using a bit more water. And uh, it usually starts uh, with 100 degrees, or in some occasion starts with nine. Uh, sorry, it starts with uh, 100 degrees, 100 degrees, and sometime with some particular teas, he starts with 90 degrees. Doesn't provide any additional information on that. Last category, Feng Huang Dan Song. In this case, five grams, 400 milliliters, and here he starts from a very low temperature, 80 degrees centigrade. And then it stays with 80 for a while and towards the end increase the temperature. So you, this uh, tea lover has the tendency to not only increase the brewing time at the end, but also increasing the temperature toward the end. Something to try out. All right, uh, I'll bring you just one more because it's a fairly different uh, proceedings, I would say. This person with Yen Chan, he uses 8 gram for 100 milliliters, quite a lot of leaves. 100 degrees water, boiling water, but then what he does, he does flash brewing, water in, water out, no waiting, for the few, a few brewings. And then later brewings, he starts increasing the time, 20, 40, 60 seconds. 
but just way later in the brewing. With Taiwan Oolong, though, is uh, in particular the green one, he uses half the quantity of leaves, 4 grams per 100 milliliters, and then 95 degrees centigrade, and the brewing it's uh, like 20, degree, 20 seconds, 40, 60, 120. He would increase only the first one, instead of 20 doing 60, if the tea is ball rolled. All right, so I would say uh, this brings you already quite uh, a lot of confusion, I would say, is a lot of information, but I don't have, you don't have to remember them all, just if some of those tea experts, I would say, because in, in Ulan they are expert, have a resonance to you. And when you read those temperature and steeping times, mm, that's kind of nice, I would like to try, just go for it. What then I've tried, I've put all this information together together also with my experience a little bit, and I try to simplify things while still keeping a certain level of uh, differentiation between the different type of oolong, since they are many and they are fairly different from each other. A, a very green, low oxidation, ball rolled oolong is completely different than an aged, twisted, and maybe roasted and high, highly oxidized. So, that's what I would suggest. First of all, the sweet spot. 5 grams for 100 milliliters. I think that summarizes it all. It's uh, what all these tea experts and tea lovers have mentioned the most. Let's stick to that. 5 grams for 100 milliliters. It's very similar to what I have here today. Now, let's look at only four groups. Okay, only four groups and you have it all. For all of them, we have the 5 grams per 100 milliliters. And we start with rolled oolong. All of them. Rolled Taiwan oolong. No matter if they are green, no matter if they are dark, no matter if they are uh, Kiewanyin or Bayachilan or, I say, Taiwan oolong, you call them high mountain, low, mo low mountain, or no mountains. <laughs> um, you call them any rolled oolong. 100 degrees centigrade, and then you start 25 seconds, 20, 25, and then you increase by 5 seconds. If it starts lacking taste, as said before, you base your feelings about the previous steeping. If it needs more than 5 second increase, you just steep the next one a bit longer. Second sweet spot for Ui Yan Cha. Here we are. Yan Cha aka Ui Rock Team, temperature, I would say, between 90 and 100 degrees. According to your feeling, with both, you won't do anything wrong. And sometimes 90 degrees is better suited for a tea, sometimes 100. Concerning the brewing time, 15, 20, 25, and as I said before, you keep on increasing by 5. If more is needed, you increase it more. Then we go further south, we go to Guangdong with the uh, Feng Wandan song, and we include in this category also other teas that are relatively highly oxidized and not rolled, like uh, uh, Dong Fan Mei Ren, Oriental Beauty in Taiwan, or generally speaking, any Bai Hao Oolong. Here we have uh, temperature between 80 and 90 degrees, for example, depending on the, really the level of oxidation. If it is higher, you can go a little bit higher with temperature. On how fragile the leaves are, usually with Dong Fan Mei Ren, it would start a little bit lower. And then the steeping time, 20, 25, 30, 35, and so on. Same story, if it needs more, you add more. That's covering nearly all categories. Yeah, we actually made uh, no distinction between roasted or not roasted. I haven't seen also any major distinction done by anyone. And uh, we have one more aspect though, aged tea. What I mean by aged vintage oolong, oolongs that are, I would say, at least 15, 20 years old. Yeah, very tasty, very good. For those teas, no matter what type of teas they are, what type of oolong they are, I would just go 200 degrees centigrade. 
and probably you want to rinse them actually to give it a rinse they are all these you want to you know, make them a little bit alive but also clean them up a little bit with hot water and then you go with 100 degrees and no matter what i'm sure you won't be disappointed with that so now up to you to choose either the simplified version that i said you at the beginning for the short or long session one of the proceedings of one of those tea lovers i mentioned before or you just stick to the sweet spots that i mentioned at the end of the video let me know in the comments below which of the many methods you choose and by doing so, don't forget to give us a like. It really means a lot to me personally, but it's also important for Nanoshan. I really like when I see likes and uh, for giving resonance to uh, the um, channel is really very important. As well, subscribe if you haven't done it so. And if you are a subscriber, just tell your friends. Maybe you know other tea lovers that are in search of tea knowledge. For now, that's all and I'll see you next week. Bye, guys.